today, today's talk is going to be about uh, something that I think I've touched in the past, but it's it's this moment with the situation with Roshi. I think it's it's um, something that. Uh, good to touch on and pay attention, attention, and, and, and most importantly, understand for ourselves, which is what every situation in life can actually do for us. You know, every, every moment, any little situation is there, and <clears throat> although many times we can control. We could actually learn from from situations and uh, use it to increase our aware awareness of everything that goes on. And in this case, uh, the fact that uh, Bush is in the hospital and uh, his uh, health is delicate. And um, yesterday, while we were at the hospital, uh, I felt. Uh, this anguish of losing Roshi. And I realized that it is what I feel. That's my experience of the experience. It's not the real experience, it's just my perception of it and what I'm feeling. The anguish of losing him, the idea and of course, you know, we, we, we're only human and, and we got feelings. And I realized that although it, it hurts, it's painful to be in a situation like this. And I mean, we all have been in situations where family member, friend, you know, somebody, uh, passes away and, and we we suffer. So what I realized was that it was my experience. It's my experience and, and uh, many times when uh, uh, someone passes away we hang on to the fact that we don't want to lose that person. We don't want to to let go because we're not weird uh, emotionally or you know involved and and, and you know friends and family of course but uh, uh, if we understand that we all go through our own, uh, our own path and we each one of us has a path to walk and we never know when that path is going to end. You know, we've seen it here, Mudita, you know, just Nagachita. Uh, and when we understand that each of us has a path to walk and, and learn from, it's, it, it doesn't stop hurting when we understand that people have it, their own path. Each, each one of us have our own path. And this doesn't stop the, the hurting and the, the emotions. But it gives us some peace of mind, at least to know that, that, that we love them. And I think at that point, that's all we can do, love, love, a, love the person for whom they are. And they might have had faults, just like any human. But if we focus on, on the love that we have for the person, whomever it might be, uh, we can really cherish the person and really see the person for whom the person is. It, if, we go, if we look beyond anybody's personality, there's this light shining behind every single human being. The only reason why we don't see it is because we have perceptions of that person that tells us, oh, they do things that, that we don't like. 
uh, they not align with what we do. But if we see that every single person has that light in their eyes, and what goes in, in, in our perception is only our perception, and we see what these people do, but they're all going through their own suffering. So in this case, when even the worst person that you might think of as the worst person, is still a human being behind, behind that wall of whatever it is that the person projects. Because that's all it is. We're only projecting ourselves. We can only be what we are at each single moment. We, we cannot be this wonderful person that we would like to be. We just, we are whom we are at every single moment. And that's what we're pro projecting. So if we have expectations of being someone else at one point in our lives, well, good luck. You can only be it now. And you got something to do about situations, then it is now. And more likely, the reason why we cannot be, you say, well, I would like to be more this type of person. Well, if you're not, you are not. Something is stopping you from being. Perhaps just the single idea of being that person. Maybe you are, but you think that you're not because you have an idea that you're not. So, if you look at it and, and see that there are things that you have to work on, work on, I don't know, whatever issues you might have, you might realize that, that those issues are really not issues, but your own perception. This morning we were talking about time and how things happen in time. Linear time, that we think of time as being from here to there, which is yesterday or tomorrow, but you would realize that whatever happened in our lives, it only happened in the now. It only happened just now. And then, because that's all we have, this now, and then this now, and then this now, and then this now. But for us to understand time, we have to put time on it. Set up a stamp that says, this happened in such and such time. That's why we have calendars to know, it's more or less keep track of what happened but it didn't happen at that moment, it happened in just in the now. So we look at things in the now, and if they are there in front of you, whatever it might have been, we were talking about things that happened throughout your life and they, they mark you, they, they have a stamp on, put a stamp on your unconscious mind, and the rest of your life, you carry it. You carry it, and something happens to you, and I was put an example, of, you know, you're in, Guys, so you're in school and you ask a girl out and she's like, what? And she laughs at the guy. And then the rest of your life you go like not asking girls out because someone rejected you. That's exactly what we do. Something happens and it's like we grab it. And it's always in front of us. Always. It's like glasses. Something happens and you put on these glasses. And then the first time you, are, you feel awkward because you're glad you have your glasses on. Like, oh, wow, this is funny. But then it comes to a point where you're so used to your glasses that you didn't even notice them. You forget completely about your glasses. That's exactly what happens when things that happen to us in life. Things that make us feel uncomfortable. And at that moment, for whatever reason, we're not able to put some awareness into it to at least understand what happens. We just get used to, it, used to it and we throw it on ourselves and we carry it and it's always there. And it might be uncomfortable for a few days or a few years, but it comes to the point when it's just that's what it is. So your reality becomes that. Now my reality is these glasses. I have to wear them. But I'm so used to them that I don't even pay attention. Sometimes I'm looking for my glasses and I'm glad I have them on. That's exactly what happens with things in life. Something happens to us and we're so uncomfortable that we just get used to being uncomfortable. It becomes part of ourselves, becomes part of our reality, and then we project everything through those glasses. Like for me, if I don't have these glasses, I'm going to be, everything's going to be blur blurry. So these glasses help me see better, but in this case, what happens to us makes us see 
life in a way that might not even be comfortable or for that matter that works for us. Something, you know, we, we go through life wondering, how come these things never work in my life? It could be a relationship, it could be work, it could be anything. And we just keep bumping and bumping and bumping into the same situation over and over. And it is because we are carrying our own perceptions all the time and being exactly who we are. And we don't pay attention because it's so automatic what we do. Like, you know, the example, the guy asked the girl out and then he got rejected and he never asks anybody out. He becomes shy, afraid, and, and then the rest of his life, the personal life is going to be, oh no, don't ask girls out because they're going to reject you. And then that transforms into something else, we just forget it. And that fear, that rejection keeps being projected. So then something else happens and now it's not you're not being rejected by a girl. Now you go try to get a job and they reject you. Now it's a rejection of a job. And then things just keep piling up on that same single idea. And we keep going through life with the same bumping, bumping into situations that seem like you didn't even call for them and then boom, they just get to you. So we pay attention and, and really think that that in the past is just here because we carry it. It's, it's there, it's like my glasses, you know. I put them on, I don't know, 10, 15 years ago. Been through several of them. <clears throat> But this is what I carry in front of me, my glasses. And everything that I see is seen through these glasses, which make me see clearly. And if I don't, then I don't see clearly. So I'm carrying these glasses in front of me all the time. And that's exactly what we do. We carry our own uh, perceptions, but like I say, it's not that right or wrong. It's just that work or don't work. And we become attached to those perceptions. We become attached to the perceptions that, that, oh no, this is wrong. It might be wrong for us, but not for other people. Because you wonder, how could there be some people that are, they keep asking every single, and going back to the girl situation, and guys that keep asking every single girl they meet. And they keep getting rejected, and they keep back doing it. It's the same thing, you know, people that, they go going to businesses and they keep failing and failing and failing and failing. You're like, have you learned? No. So that's exactly what, what happens. We, we carry our own perceptions and then it stops us from doing, I don't know, just, just being able to, to enjoy an evening watching the sun go down. Because, you know, we, we got these perceptions of, of what is and what is and what shouldn't be. Oh. So, by just seeing that things work or don't work, we'll get rid of a lot of our emotional garbage, gar uh, baggage or garbage that goes with, with those emotional attachments that we got to our own perceptions. Because we, we think so high of ourselves and, and like, my ideas matter. Well, they matter to you. And they might be important, of course. But if you keep bumping into people because of your ideas, we were talking yesterday, when people say, well, uh, someone says, well, you know, people always misunderstand what I say. Well, if more than two or three people have told you exactly the same, well, it's not that people misunderstand you, it's that you're not being clear. At one point, we have to pay attention and understand that it's not them. We might defend our point of view and say, well, this is what I have to say. Yes. But if you keep bumping into the situation, well, it might not be them. It might be you. And then how, el how else can we really change our reality if it's not by changing ourselves? Many times, um, to me, Zen or Buddhism is seen through 
something outside of ourselves, something that we have to practice. Or, or, and, you know, we do chanting, we do praying, well, whatever, all these things that we do. It's part of the religion. But to me, there's no other way to practice Zen if it's not through my, understand, my own understanding of things, or life of myself. And I think in that sense, that's what Shakyamuni Buddha meant all along. When he said, be a light unto yourself, it's like, deal with this. Deal with your mind, deal with your, deal with your perception, deal with your body. Because there's no way, how are you going to understand? Uh, the the uh, sutras and, and the chanting, and it tells us, gives us instructions. But if you learn the instructions, like learning how to operate a camera, it's just instructions. If you don't apply what they tell you, and say, okay, this is, and understand what it says, and apply it through your understanding. You're gonna get through the, the, the camera like all, you're gonna understand every single uh, uh, function that he has. But you just read it and make it work and let it go. The same thing with Zen and Buddhism. You wouldn't apply it to ourselves and, and really put to work into every single thing. Every single thing. I mean, it could be driving down the street, it could be relationships, it could be work, it could be money. If you don't really look into it, we're just going to keep bumping into the same situations. And for that matter, Buddhism is going to be, or Zen is going to just be something that you do because it's nice, it feels it's peaceful. But the real work starts with you. So, Dealing with this whole situation about death and what we what we what going through right now, I I would be immensely sad if uh, Roshi goes. But at the same time, I'm I would I would be happy for him. Because it's his own path. And I'm hoping that at this moment when he's in the hospital and he is uh, dealing with this whole situation, he can actually get out of there and come back. and give us his insight and hoping that, that it, will, it will be a learning experience for him. I mean, eventually we all have to go, unfortunately. <clears throat> but I'm hoping that, that as the great teacher that he is, he can come back once more and give us another great lesson. Mm -hmm.